In today's mini tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to randomly sort two separate lists of stimuli at the same time. So for instance, let's imagine that you have a stimulus file where you've got two lists of stimuli. Now if you were to go into PsychoPy here and make up a simple loop where you were to show uh, a word stimulus and a color stimulus on each trial, what you would get are pairs like this, tree and red, grass and green, sun and yellow, hill and blue, etc. Let's actually go ahead and make that loop and just see that in action real quick. So I'm going to rename this to be our word trial. I'm going to insert a new routine where we'll call this one the color trial. And we'll go ahead and add a loop around these two sections here. We're going to set the number of repetitions to one. We'll call this a study trials. We'll uh, select randomly. Uh, we'll leave the rest as uh, blank, except we will select the stimulus file. So we'll select our stimulus file here. This is the file that I've got open in Excel. Go ahead and open that. You can see it detects there are six conditions with two parameters. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six conditions. We have two parameters. Uh, the parameters are being detected as word stim and color stim. Now all that's left to do is on our word and color trials to actually show the word or color. We'll go ahead and add a text object. We'll call this one word text and we'll go ahead and set its value to be word stim. And of course we have to set this to uh, set every repeat so that it actually knows to go in and set these values to change uh, every time the loop repeats once and the rest we can leave as default. We'll go ahead here and add in our color text and this will be color stem. Once again with set every repeat. Now we're going to save our experiment here. We'll call it dual list and if we just go ahead and click on run and leave participant blank and session is number one because we don't really care about logging data at the moment. What we get are the words and their corresponding colors. So grass is paired with green, tree is paired with red, hill is paired with blue. And you can see over here grass is paired with green, uh, tree with red, and hill with blue. Now notice that our list was pulling out stimuli randomly because we were selecting randomly. If we went to sequential, then it would pull out first tree in red, then hill in blue, then grass in green. So random was randomly selecting stimuli, but tree will always be paired with red. Now, it may be the case that for our experiment, we actually want these two lists to always be randomized. I mean, maybe we're not actually pairing the word stimulus and the color stimulus together for any particular reason. And we actually want for each individual subject, the colors and the words to just be randomly paired together. So how would we deal with this? How would we do this? Well, here's one simple, fast way of doing this. We're gonna add another column to our uh, Excel file here. We'll call it rand and the value of the first cell, we're going to press the equal sign and we're going to type in rand, open bracket, close bracket, hit enter. Now that is a function in Excel that gives you a random number from 0 to 1. And notice if I go over to a blank cell and I just press delete, notice that that rand function is updating. Anytime something happens in the Excel file, that function is going to update. So I can copy it and paste it and now I've got a column of random uh, numbers that are always going to constantly change. So here's how you would actually untether these two lists such that each subject will get a random order of the words that will be randomly paired with the other stimulus set. Another way to think of it is that for each subject we're going to first randomly order this list and then randomly order this list and they just happen to be shown in pairs. What we do is we select the rand column along with one other column we go into our data tab of Excel and just click sort. So this little icon here sorts from smallest to largest. We could do largest to smallest, it doesn't matter. But watch what happens. We have these two columns selected and the words end up getting randomized. So if we then save this file and we run our experiment again, 
what we're going to find is that grass won't be paired with green, tree won't be paired with red, and hill won't be paired with blue. In fact, we can see what they're going to be paired with. Grass will be paired with yellow, tree with green, hill with purple. We go ahead and we click OK, and we can watch for our stimuli, and you can see grass is paired with yellow this time. Now, this is a really easy way to randomly separate out different stimuli in your stimulus file. The trick is, though, if we were to run a second subject right now, again, what we would find is that exact same pairing that we had over here would happen again. So one thing you have to remember, if you're going to use this technique for separating out separate uh random orders of, of separate columns in your Excel file is that for each subject you have to come in, randomly sort things, save it, and then go ahead and run your next subject. It's not very hard to do, but you just have to remember how to do it. If you want to get fancier, one other technique you could use to implement this would be to write some inline script where you first loaded in all the words into an array, then you loaded in all the colors, and then you randomly shuffled the words, you randomly shuffled the colors, and then in your loop, you would have some code here that would set up uh, the next word and the next color to be shown on the appropriate trials. If you want to get fancy like that, I definitely recommend checking out one of my other tutorials where I go through how to, how to actually code uh, Python code in PsychoPy. But I think this is very fast and functional for most purposes. Now, if you did, for instance, have other variables that you needed to pair up. So for instance, let's say this is a thing and this is abstract, this is a thing. Sure, hills can be abstract, why not? The sun is an actual thing. Grass are things too, but let's just call them abstract. Let's say that some words belonged with certain types. Like let's say that for each word stimulus, you had also you'd categorize them as different types. If you're just going and, and select your two columns and randomize, what you would see is that the words are now becoming unpaired with their correct types. And that's actually a problem. So you don't want that to happen. Instead, what you want to do in that situation is select your random column along with any other columns that need to stay together. So notice that house is a thing and sky is abstract. When we sort this, house is a thing, sky is abstract. We can sort as many times as we want. Because we have all three columns selected, house will always be a thing, sky will always be abstract. So the pairings, these pairings will always stay together as long as you, um, when you're sorting by your random column, you have selected all the columns you want to stay together. And also keep in mind your random column has to be the column on the left. Uh, we could, for instance, have a second random column over here. So we can go ahead and create the random function, paste it down. And so if we wanted, we could also be randomly sorting the color stimuli separately. You may sort of think, well, now it's getting kind of complicated. Why would I want to do that? Well, what if you had uh, a third uh, stimulus set here and you wanted each of these? You wanted the words... You wanted the colors, you wanted the numbers to always be randomly paired up in a different sequence for each subject. Well, if you simply randomly ordered the words, then green would always be paired with one, purple always with two, and so on. So you would have to go in, randomize this column. You could also then select this rand2 column, and you could randomly sort your colors, and you can see the words and the numbers are all staying constant. Interesting, this is just purely random, but all our abstracts and all our things ended up uh, directly uh, clumping together. But of course, if we sort again, then they split up and so on. So anyway, this has been a very quick tutorial on how you can have multiple lists of stimuli within a run of a loop. So within a trial, every time you reference, say, word stim or color stim or num stim, because it's one run of a loop, you're basically pulling an entire row. So whatever three things you've got here are the things that will show up in your experiment. And so if you want those uh, separate lists of items to be randomized separately, so you want to randomize your word stim separately from your color stim, separately from your numbers, this is a very fast and easy technique to use. Anyway, I hope that helps. And this has been a PsychoPy tutorial quickie.